Welcome back to the crew and we are here with Hajar. Hajar. Yeah. And Hajar's going to do a mock test. Now, just to let everybody know, uh, first off, sorry about the manual videos. They're, they're all over now. Don't worry about that. So no more cursing from me. Uh, Hajar's never driven this car before, so there might be some little buttons and tweaks that Hajar doesn't know about. So if there is, you'll know why I'm trying to assist Hajar with these buttons. Okay, um, Hajar, we will use the sat nav actually. Okay, okay. it's been a little bit of a while mm -hmm. uh, since I've been back here at Irith Driving Test Centre. This is Ilias, by the way. <laughs> so um, I'm going to set that up now. As I'm setting it up, we're doing a mock test. So the first thing that you'll be asked to do by your examiner is your tell me question. Okay, so would you be able to tell me? What the road legal tire requirements are? Um, 1.6 millimeters in the free course of the tire. In the tire. Good. Yeah. Um, there's one last bit, Elias. Any? Yeah. Sorry, <laughs> we'll leave Elias alone now. Sorry, mate. <laughs> okay. Um, so we're gonna do your drive part of the test now. I'm going to set your sat nav up because it's very common to actually use the sat nav as you're leaving any driving test center now. So we're going to set that up. But like I said, it's been a little while since I've been here at Ira. So just give me a second to find a route. And then Gloria, this is what we call the sat nav, will talk over me. And I'll do my best to be quiet while Gloria is talking mm -hmm. and giving you directions. Now, just before we start, and while I'm looking for a route, would you mind filling people in where you're at with your driving, how many lessons, if you've done a test before, blah, blah, blah. Um, so I started doing lessons like around this time last year and then I had the driving test for December. It got moved to March, then it got moved from March to this month. Then I failed my driving test um, on trying to go to one way roads, but I'm trying to replicate the test closer to the date. So I can hopefully pass, yeah. Good, and this mock test will hopefully give you some feedback so you yeah. know how you are, you know, yeah. if anything needs any practice. Exactly. Okay, well, our sat-nav, sorry, Ilias, um, our sat-nav is set up. So all I'm going to do is push go, or drive, and then we're going to drive on. Now, I have put you on the right side of the road, and you're facing a parked car, and you can't see. So one of the manoeuvres would be to reverse back, pull up on the right, reverse back two car lengths. Mm -hmm. So what I'd like you to do, I'm not really going to count this as the test. What I'd like you to do is put yourself into a reverse gear. Lovely. Now that you're in reverse gear, when you gently release the brake, the car will gently move. And mm -hmm. you can see your distance on the pavement. Mm -hmm. This thick yellow line is your tyre. Mm -hmm. The gap between the thick yellow line and the pavement is your gap between the pavement. Mm -hmm. Do you see how it just goes all the way down? So you've got a gap all the way down. Mm -hmm. And it's staying the same distance. Mm -hmm. So you won't even need to do any steering. Okay. So when you feel it's safe, what I'd like to do is just slowly reverse back in a straight line. Mm -hmm. When you feel like you've got enough room, just come to a stop. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. When you're ready. Welcome back to the crew to mock test. So remember all of the serious driver thoughts will be up here in red and all of the advisory driver thoughts will be up here in yellow. The car sensed another vehicle which has actually passed oh. so it stopped it but that's what that beep was for. Same reason, the car's gone now. So it just beeps at you because it thinks there's a car still there. To all of you that are doing a driving test at Irif or Belvedere, bear in mind these are number one and two of the most difficult driving test centres in the UK. This is Irif and this is the roundabout route, so if you're doing your driving test at Irif, pay close attention. Okay, so you're ready to drive on? 
Yeah. All right, when you're ready, take your time, drive on, and do your best to follow the sat-nav, please. This is your independent drive. So for obvious reasons, we are not allowed to start inside the test center car park. Yet when you're leaving Erif Driving Test Center car park, or if you visit it during a test at Belvedere, which you may do to do the reverse park exercise, you must do it very slowly as you enter into the car park and very slowly on the way out. You have a huge company on this industrial estate, which is super, super busy, and you may have lorries and large vehicles coming from both directions. So peep and creep, take your time as you start your driving test. To 100 yards, go right on the roundabout and take the third exit, Anderson Way. Go right on the roundabout and take the third exit. After completing the first roundabout where we are turning right third exit, we will then be following signs towards Thamesmead. We are going by the satnav on this route and we are heading towards the infamous horse roundabout. Now this roundabout, the lane discipline is quite crucial as the road markings are invisible. After 200 yards, go right on the roundabout and take the third exit, A2060, pick it up and away. Right on the roundabout and take the third exit. This entrance to the horse roundabout was well timed by Hadra and now you can see she's keeping to the right lane as we pass the first exit coming towards the second exit. This is the point where Hadra does her mirror checks internal and external to the left, signals left and spirals off the roundabout into the left lane. This is a very good example of the roundabout. After 300 yards, go right on the roundabout and take the third exit. A2016, Eastern Way. Go right on the roundabout and take the third exit. Completing the lane change from the left to right in order to prepare for the next roundabout is quite difficult and Hadja does a good example of this. Again, she's taken a good approach to the roundabout and entered when it was safe to do so. She checks her internal and left mirror again and signals left and spirals off to the left side of the roundabout. This is very good considering these two roundabouts are so soon at the beginning of your driving test. And remember, Hadja hasn't driven this car before. Okay, Hadja, when it's safe, I'd like you to show me how you would turn on the dipped beam headlights. Okay, thank you very much. Good answer on the show me question. These can be done on very fast roads, similar to the road that we're on. This is a 50 road. And you know, demonstrating the question, the show me question at high speeds can be a little bit of a test, right? So make sure you choose your moment. The examiner will lead the question by saying when it's safe. Hadja gave a pause, waited until she had full control of the vehicle, maintained her speed, operate the switch to turn on the dip beam headlights, and then switched it back off again. So an excellent job from Hadja there for a show me question. Now on a side note, this is a little bit of extra practice that I would do with my students in this area. And the sat nav is gonna give us a direction to take the next exit up to the Abbey Wood flyover roundabout. Now this wouldn't come up on this test route, you would continue straight ahead towards Thamesmead, but this will allow Hadja double practice at going straight ahead at this roundabout as the lines again are invisible. So use the cracks down the center of the road to try and help you distinguish between the lanes. Bear left, A2016, towards Thamesmead Central. Then, 
cross the roundabout and take the second exit towards 10 speed west. After 200 yards, cross the roundabout and take the second exit. Cross the roundabout and take the second exit. Here we are at the entrance to the roundabout and as you can see Hedger's making good assessment to see where there's a safe gap to enter and now she's entered at a good and appropriate time. She's currently holding the left lane. I'd like to see people that take the second exit on this roundabout go immediately into the second lane. Remember use those cracks or tar lines that you may see on the footage here to distinguish between the lanes. She's done a good mirror signal again to exit and keeps to the left lane. Hadja seems to be quite good at the spiral, which is the exit part on the roundabouts, and trying her best to maintain the left lane. Now we're entering back into the dual carriageway, and I believe Hadja believes that her lane will come to an end. So she's kind of really watching the right side, thinking about signaling and moving over. But if we look long, we can see that this lane continues, so there's no need for a merge. And this can help you to just relax and maintain your speed and follow the road ahead. If you're lucky enough to get the sat nav on your driving test, then this will show you a blue line and at the top will show you a banner with an arrow and usually the name and the distance of the street that you'll be asked to turn into. Hadja's using this as an advantage and planning early, doing her mirrors, signaling and moving into the right lane because she can see that the next roundabout she will be turning right, third exit. After 300 yards, Go right on the roundabout and take the third exit, A2041, Central Way. For all of those that are interested in winning a free driving test, yes, I said it out loud, a free driving test, especially when it's like super expensive and ultra difficult to find, then you probably all know if you're already subscribed, then you can enter the competition by putting free driving test in the comments down below. But if you haven't subscribed, then make sure you subscribe because you must subscribe to enter the competition and write down in the comments below free driving test Everybody that's entered, every time we reach the next thousand subscribers, we will announce the winner. Good luck. Go right on the roundabout and take the third exit, A2041, Central Way. MSPL. I missed one out. MSPL. What did I miss out? If you don't know the routine, then you gotta learn the routine, and it's called something not MSPSL. Oh, that's it. MSPSL. Right, so if you don't know, then you gotta know that you gotta do MSPSL before every single junction. It is the foundations, the basics, and you can't advance once you've laid good foundations. Say it with me now, you can only build as high as your foundations are deep. After 300 yards, cross the roundabout and take the second exit, A2041, Central Way. Because of the bus lane running continuously through Thamesmead Central, I advise my students to use the right lane on the approach, on the roundabout, and when exiting the roundabout, to avoid slowing down any road users in the left. You will need to maintain the right lane as the bus lane continue. What was that? Did you just see that? Right, that's the first serious fault. This is for judgment of a road users. As you can see, when we moved out into the roundabout, there was a car coming from the right. We slowed that car down. This is enough to receive a serious driver fault. And that's what you want to avoid when exiting. So if you do exit and go into the left lane, then make sure you're doing so without slowing down any other road users. Here, Hadja now knows that she's probably received a serious driver fault and she's been too hesitant. This normally happens. So here we can see the vehicles on the right with straight wheels and a big gap. And now the right car has also got straight wheels. Hadja waits till it fully exits before making her way on the roundabout. All right, so this is an undue hesitation, advisory driver fault. 
and moving on. So you can see that the bus lane is still continuing down here on the left and you may feel like, oh, that car just undertook Hadjar. Yes, it did. Wouldn't I fail my driving test for this? Yes, you would if it was a very long, continuous two-lane road. This is not and you still have the bus lane running down the left side. So there is a need for you to continue to use the right lane. And this should be taken into consideration, should in capital letters, by the DVSA examiner. However, it is down to their discretion. So use my advice wisely, but carefully, and make sure that you know what is needed from you on your driving test. Okay, so I hope I have filled in all the gaps, dotted the I's and crossed the T's, and I hope that the information that I'm giving you is of value. If it is, don't forget to do something to the like button. I can't remember what they say anyways. All right, so we're running down here. Roadworks, we're forced into the bus lane. We have our order sign there, which is our circle sign. Order us into the left lane. However, we need to turn right. So Hedge is excellent at getting herself ready and prepared early. Remember the MSPSL routine. That stands for Mirrors Signal Position, which Hedge did early into the right lane. And speed and look. So we slow down and we look before we enter into the next junction. Here we are holding the right lane. And as Hadja does her spiral, remember she's good at this, off to the left here, she receives another serious driver fault. Here is a left spiral out into the left. We saw this car that now passes us on the right in the left and Hadja moved across its path, causing it to slow. This is enough again to receive a serious driver fault for judgment crossing. the roundabout and take the second exit, A2041, Carlisle Road. The vehicle in front is in the left lane. When it goes onto the roundabout, it uses the right lane. This can receive a serious driver fault on your driving test for lane discipline. Hadger's probably still hung up on the driver faults you received earlier for going when it wasn't safe. And now where we have this big opportunity to go, Hadger hesitates again and stops. This is a driver fault for undue hesitation. Hadja copies the vehicle that was in front and uses the right lane as she goes on to the roundabout. Notice the crack that we referred to earlier, which can help you distinguish one lane from the other. Now, no other road users were affected on this occasion, so I gave discretion and didn't mark this as a serious driver fault on Hadja's mock test report. After 200 yards, Cross the roundabout and take the second exit, A2041, towards 10 speed south. Here we are at the Abbeywood flyover for the second time. Remember earlier I said that the test routes don't normally take you the first time. We are now at the second time, which you will do after completing the Thamesmead Central area. We are going second exit straight ahead, just like the double-decker bus. And notice as the double-decker bus emerges onto the roundabout, they go into the second lane. Notice the color difference, cracks in the road, or tar lines to distinguish the two lanes. When Hadra emerges out, again, she sticks to the left lane. This is okay, however, there is fast moving traffic from the right. And now as we cross over into that second lane, we may cross the path of one of the fast moving vehicles, which can happen quite commonly on this roundabout, and thus increasing the chance of you receiving a serious driver fault. Now, as we exit this roundabout, we are in the correct lane. This is nice lane discipline. We have that right arrow pushing us into the right lane. Knowing the area and knowing that this happens suddenly can help you. So watching the videos again and again and doing plenty of practice. There Hadja receives a serious driver fault for slowing down the other road users as she exited the roundabout. We receive another serious driver fault here for use of speed because when you exit the roundabout it becomes a 20 mile an hour zone straight away. So again watching the videos over and over and having plenty of practice with your driving exam sorry instructor can really help you to pass your driving test first time. We're going to be turning left here first exit at the roundabout and if you do rewind the video as you'll see this gray cobblestone area here at the previous one we had a warning triangle that showed us that that was a pedestrian crossing 
Some directions are warned by the warning triangle and the opposite directions may not show the sign. However, it's still a crossing. So again, watch the videos over and over and plenty of practice with your driving instructor so that you give yourself the best possible chance of passing your driving test first time. So we have now joined a new road and it's a 30 mile an hour speed limit. So it's really important that we know how common it is when we turn into a new road as I never did this personally and never saw the speed change and never knew what speed I was supposed to be doing and pretty much failed all my driving tests or my mock driving tests for this reason. So it's really important to stay vigilant to speed signs here we have a double roundabout system, what's quite common, you can go both ways on this test route or any test center that has a double roundabout system, is that people will not identify the next roundabout, therefore they won't look, and this is a serious driver fault for observations. This is the number one reason why most people will fail the driving test. It's so, so common. So make sure when you approach the second roundabout, you clearly show your examiner your MSPSL routine, and that involves you slowing, adjusting, your speed as you approach the roundabout and looking so that's the s and the l part of the routine um, the last s and l of the routine so if we're doing this and we're checking right left right which is the minimum observations at any junction this will be a good example to the examiner that you've definitely realized the roundabout or junction whichever junction it is you know you've adjusted your speed early vision early decision and if it's safe you can continue as we have give way lines here same again some mirror signal if you need to we're going straight ahead so that's not necessary position again it's one lane so not really positioning in any lane and then we're just slowing and looking so for these roundabouts it's really just down to the last two um, bits of the routine so the mirror signal position is not super important it's more the speed and look we have one final roundabout here again it's the same routine as we just got one lane so there's no need for mirrors no need for signal we're not really slowing down as we've got early vision early decision and we can just make our way through so the examiners just really want to see the head moving clearly showing their observations you know and adjusting your speed if necessary to what you can see that's what's referred to from examiners as acting on the information so depending what you see you act on that you adjust your speed accordingly do your mirror checks if necessary and you know choose what lane you need to be on or what it is that you need to do you either slow stop or swerve there really is no other actions that you can take as a road user not yet not until we have the flying cars now here Hadra receives a serious driver fault I'll let you view the footage now and it's marked down as positioning normal driving I didn't mark that one for the speed however that could be a serious driver fault also depending on the discretion of the examiner so notice here she'd probably speed up because of the pressure of that vehicle but we're not moving into the left lane god damn it I think it might be a good idea that you move to the left lane. I know we're close to the roundabout, but unless we're overtaking, we want to use the left lane. Okay. Yeah. After 500 yards, go right on the roundabout and take the second exit, A2060. Pick a divan away, then keep right. Now one thing about the sat nav here, it does say it's turning right, so does the sign. But if you know this roundabout, you can use the middle lane and the roundabout marking, it's a straight arrow here. Okay. Yeah. So you could use the right, you can use this one, so either or this would be the safest lane. Go right on the roundabout and take the second exit, A2060. Pick a divan away, then keep right. like to do is take the next road on the left so don't worry about the sat nav just take the next road on the left at the traffic lights thanks okay we're going to choose a more simple maneuver okay mm -hmm. so what I'd like to do is somewhere down this road mm -hmm. 
people over and stop on the right. Okay, don't worry about the yellow lines on this occasion, just somewhere on the right. Pretty much, and then reverse back roughly two car lengths, please. Just keep a reasonable distance on the curb on your side. Okay, okay when you're ready. There's nothing there, it's oh. seen ghosts or something, I don't like it. I turned that sound off because it's just going to keep distracting you. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, take your time when you're ready. Drive on, please. And I'd just like you to pull over by the bushes on the left. Some on the left here, it's fine. Thank you. All right, this is the part of the driving test where if it's safe, I'm going to ask you to do an emergency stop. Have mm. you done that before? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. So my signal to you, it will be my hand up on the word stop. I'll only be able to ask you if it's safe. So if any vehicles come along during the process, I'll tell you we're not going to do it anymore. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so be ready for me to put my hand up and say stop. At that point, I'd like you to do your controlled stop. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, when you're ready, drive on and just wait for my signal. Yeah? Drive on when you're ready. Thank you very much. And now, like, just to pull over somewhere on the left again, please. All right, lovely. And do you remember how to put the car into park? Um, isn't it push? Yes, it is. Yeah. There you go, you can see it's displayed P on the dashboard. Okay, uh, we'll leave the engine running because the air conditioning stays on, it just okay. keeps us a bit fresh, okay? And just cancel the signal. Uh, normally, you would turn the engine off at the end of your test. This is the end of your test. I'll just ask you to just put it in park. Mm -hmm. Okay, so everybody does the same thing and immediately looks over at the test sheet. So, I'm know. hiding it. Okay, so how do you feel it went? I felt. Why? Um, I think there was a roundabout was coming off it. Yeah. I didn't see, I don't know why I didn't see the cars behind me. Mm -hmm. And I cut in front and then I saw them and I was like, oh, I, like when I finally did the, went to the other side. Yeah. Because yeah, I failed. And I think it was something else, but I don't remember. But I think it was something else as well. Okay. Yeah. So you're on the money. There was one roundabout that we exit. Yeah. You exit on the left. But you're uh -huh. still in the right lane. But I didn't see the. I don't know why yeah. I didn't see the cars behind me. 
because I went because I could have gone down further, but I, was like, I might as well just get on that late earlier. Yeah. But I didn't see the cars. So, yeah, yeah. So that was the big roundabout that yeah. I call it. The Abbey would fly over roundabout. Yeah. Yeah, you know, way a bit. Okay. Yep. So that was that. I'm um, sorry, Lewis. Um, okay. So well done on your show me tell me questions. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Maneuver. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the drive itself, there was quite a lot of areas that you're describing. So it looks like roundabouts are something that you'll want to practice a little mm -hmm. bit more. Okay. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, for the reasons about the roundabouts, which we can discuss in a second, mm -hmm. you weren't successful on this attempt. Yeah. Okay. Um, and it was the fact that we had one, two, three, four, five, six serious faults, or what are called major faults, okay, the serious or dangerous faults. Um, the first one was number three, mm -hmm. uh, crossing. So when you're crossing across the cars mm -hmm. to move back over, mm -hmm. have a look and see where they are because you know what you're describing you crossed over to the right mm -hmm. and you said that you didn't see that car mm -hmm. it's sometimes when we're crossing back to the left mm -hmm. as well the the cars are a bit close mm -hmm. closer than what we would like mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. um sometimes they're a bit further away like two three four car lengths and mm -hmm. if we're not slowing down mm -hmm. we're not slowing them down maybe it's not so dangerous mm -hmm. but it's better to play it safe <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. So just picking up the same serious driver faults. You know when we cross over to left. Yeah. Just want to see how close that car is now. Is that at Tinsbury Central? Uh, so that one was. I have to look back at the video to nail it which mm -hmm. junction it was. Um, I think it was round Thamesmead Central. Yes. Um. It so roundabout before, no, the Abbey would fly over roundabout again, the Arton Way, that was good, uh, as we came across. A little bit lane there, I'd like to see you more in that second lane, I know there's no road markings, I don't know if you know what I'm talking about, you went straight on the Arton Way roundabout, the Abbey would fly over roundabout, mm -hmm. second exit, you were a little bit more over on the left. Mm -hmm. You did move across, you did your mirrors, didn't make any marks for it, okay, mm -hmm. but that's just a tip. And yes, it must have been when you came through to, uh, Thamesmead Central. I caught someone um, off on the roundabout as well, didn't I? Yeah. yeah so, okay, so there's that. a lot of things with roundabouts, which you know yeah. what, I'm not going to go into more depth here mm -hmm. and just talk about and number them all off, okay? Mm -hmm. um, you'll see it on the video, so that's good. And then mm -hmm. I'll give you explanations and tips and stuff like that to mm -hmm. try and help you out. Mm -hmm. But roundabouts are an area where you want to have a look at. Now, you mm -hmm. probably noticed that I did make some marks. I was trying to hold back for a little while, so I wasn't going to put you off mm -hmm. and then I think when you saw me make a mark then you were undue hesitation you were too hesitant on the roundabouts okay. I didn't put it down as a serious mark okay. it's just a few regular driver faults okay. but it can go one way or the other mm -hmm. so on my driving tests when I'm, I was doing my lessons and my mock tests I would get super frustrated mm -hmm. because some of the mock test examiners mm -hmm. driving instructors would say to me oh you didn't go when it was safe to go mm -hmm. And then I would go when it wasn't safe to go mm -hmm. and I could never find a balance. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to ask you, how do you know when it's safe to drive out at any junction? Um, is it when the when there's no cars coming where you want to go kind of thing? Yeah, it's yeah. another way of explaining it. Good. Yeah. It's a good question you can ask yourself, which is, would I walk out? Mm -hmm. So if you're sitting at a roundabout and you're thinking, uh, do I drive out? Mm -hmm. Ask yourself, mm -hmm. would I walk out? And if the answer's a yes, go for it. Mm -hmm. If the answer's a maybe or a no, it might be best to just wait until you see a yes opportunity. Mm -hmm. Does that help? Yeah. Sometimes it helps. It helped mm -hmm. me mm -hmm. because that's what I had the frustration with. Mm -hmm. Do I, don't I go? Lawrence, God bless you, Lawrence, said to me, would you drive out? <laughs> Bing! The light bulb went off. No <laughs> more issues from there on. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, any questions for me? No. Wait. Yeah. So I got six majors. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that is so bad. Yeah. Another one was for your speed. When was that? As we were coming up the road just now before we reached the roundabouts here to come back to the test oh, Yeah, I did food. hit. It's Faye, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I love the expression of your eyes. 
<laughs> you clocked it and your eyes just went. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I looked at the, the uh-huh, back. Uh-huh. It says more than 30. Yeah. And it started going red. I was like, oh gosh. And then we needed to move back. So that was another serious driver fault because you but, didn't go back into that left lane until I asked you to. No, because I was thinking, we're going to go right anyways. Uh huh. So we might as well stay on the lane because there was a car behind me. So I might as well yes. stay on the lane because I'm going right. Because I don't want to go down Good. and then go back. Because it's confusing for the car in front of Yes, me. but we had probably about a quarter of a mile until you Still had to, to do that. So what you'd done is you'd stayed in the right lane, preventing the car behind you from overtaking. Okay. Forcing it. It didn't do it. But mm. otherwise forcing them to undertake, which is passing on the left. And then that held the traffic up. So if we move back to the left lane, we don't do that. There's no mm. incidents like what I've just explained. They go on their way. You stay at 30 miles an hour. Job done. Because mm. you probably felt pressure to go faster because you knew that person was behind you. Yeah, true. Yeah? Yeah. Cool beans? Cool. All right. So I've been Scott. It's been yeah. Ilias. <laughs> Sorry, it's keep teasing idiots, I'm sorry. Um, this has been Hedgehog, um, stay safe, stay tuned, see you next time, peace.